Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. Powering large numbers of LEDs, either for DIY projects, uh, cosplay, room lighting, or anything else, is a bit more tricky than working with smaller projects, and it requires a, an understanding of what's exactly happening. In this video, I'm going to show you, with real examples, how you can power large numbers of LEDs in your next project. All advice in this video applies just the same for regular 12 volt LEDs or 5 volt addressable NeoPixel LEDs. Okay, so why is it so difficult to power massive LED arrays? Well, it all boils down to current. If voltage is the strength of electricity, then current is the amount or quantity of it. With large amounts of LEDs, we need large amounts of current, and herein lies the problem. Okay, so in order to not starve our LEDs of current, we need to make sure that our power supply, be it a battery or a wall adapter, is more than adequate, and that's fairly simple. When you're shopping for power supplies, check their specifications. This one, for example, provides 8 amperes of 5 volt electricity. And that's quite a lot. It's strong enough to drive 400 NeoPixels. So if you want to spice up your room or gaming area or something, that's more than enough. Now for more serious, more uh, heavyweight projects, you might want to pick up something like this. A 30 ampere, 5 volt power supply. I, for example, used one of those for my massive room-sized LED screen that I built. If you like overkill projects, um, I think you might enjoy that video. Now, for high-current projects that are portable, like my Doomfist cosplay, for example, with uh, hundreds of LEDs, or whatever else you might want to build, we'll need to get some high-current providing batteries. USB power banks, which I recommend to people who are just starting out with LEDs, won't cut it. At best, they supply 2.1 amperes, and that's just peanuts. That is because they are bottlenecked by the current regulating chip that is built into them. So the easiest way to get massive amounts of current is to use unregulated cells. For example, I know some people use 18650s in battery holders for a solid power output in a compact package. The ones that are designed for use in vapes can output crazy 30 amperes. But the secret sauce that I use in my projects are these lithium iron phosphate batteries. I can't emphasize enough how great these are. Unlike regular LiPo batteries, these, due to their chemistry, are not 7.4, but 6.6 volts. That means you can connect them directly to your digital LED circuit without any regulation. Sure, 6.6 is still a bit higher than 5 volts NeoPixels ask for, but personally, I never had any get damaged by being powered with these batteries. These are usually sold for use in RC cars and planes, and they don't really explicitly say how much amperes they provide, but that figure is expressed in C the discharge rate, which is kind of the same thing. Let's use this battery for an example. In this website, let's type in its voltage, its capacity, and its C rate. All of that is written on the battery. This battery can provide up to 42 amperes, which is quite more than the power bank. If you're looking to power 12 volt LED strips, you can buy these in four cell configuration to deliver around 12 volts, or you can buy two two cells and connect them in serial. If you're unsure what that means, hit the subscribe button, as I'm about to release a video on serial versus parallel, what those concepts are and how we can use them, and that will explain everything. Okay, now we got all the amperes in the world, but these LEDs still won't glow. That's because of copper deficiency. Let me explain. Serious amounts of current require thick conductors, so swap out all thin spindly wires with proper thick ones. The thicker the wire, the easier electricity can flow. If you push too much current through thin wires, they will heat up or even melt, so plan ahead. This of course applies both for power supply and battery driven projects. But that's only step one. Now think about it, you're pumping all this current into your LED strips, but the LED strips themselves are paper thin. Electricity ends up zigzagging meters of hair thin wire internally in the strip, and of course it's gonna affect the light. We must cut out all these middlemen, all these LEDs in between our source and the furthest LEDs in the circuit. How? by soldering in a shunt. A shunt, simply put, is a shortcut for electricity. Check this out. Instead of connecting a single set of power wires at the beginning like usual, only to see the end part dim in this color, we'll connect another set of power wires straight to the second segment. This way, the electricity won't be obstructed by meters of LED tape that just impairs the flow. You can think of it as reinforcing the circuit. We're not disconnecting anything, we're just adding another path for the electrons. It's much easier for electricity to take the shortcut and power our second LED segment to its full potential with ease. Not only your LEDs will shine brighter, the entire circuit won't heat up as much, too. This is exactly the same thing that I did for my wall-sized LED screen project, and it's a crucial step in powering massive arrays of LEDs. Okay, so to recap. Number one, adequate current. Make sure your power supply can actually drive the amount of LEDs you plan to. Number two, adequate conductors. Use as thick of a wire as you can get away with. And number three, adequate spacing. Connect additional power wires so no part of your circuit will be too far from the power source. 
This video was highly requested as not a lot of people cover this topic, so if you know someone who might benefit from this knowledge, someone who's maybe getting into DIY stuff or electronics or cosplay, you know, with effects and all that, uh, drop them a link to this video and help spread the knowledge. And uh, I, as a beginner YouTuber, will thank you. So, thanks. <laughs> that being said, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm. <laughs>